Hey, what's going on, guys? Jay Maddox here, Jay Maddox Entertainment. As always, thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. So hopefully you didn't miss it, but if you did, I'll put the link right there for you to go back and check out uh, this past Friday night on an episode of Paper Cuts. Brad Proctor and myself, we interviewed the one and only Mitch Seaborn. It was a lot of fun. It was a pretty long show, so grab your popcorn if you're going to go back and, and check it out, okay? Grab yourself a drink. Uh, we talked about the fact that he's a lawyer, uh, the fact that he's a uh, high school English teacher, and he still finds time to write. Yeah, he also read some from his uh, upcoming short story collection, so that was pretty cool. Talked a little football, 2011 Sugar Bowl. Sorry, buddy, I, I had to. He, he's an Arkansas Razorback fan, but look, he lives there. I, I, it happens, it happens. So I had to give him a little, uh, a little diss for that. He won't let me live that one down. But anyways, in preparation for the show, I was going to read a book. Brad was going to read a book. The book I read, I believe it's the latest release from Mitch Seaborn, The Things We Cannot Say. And this, this was a pretty good book. So let's hop into it because this ended up being a, a very involved tale. It's brilliant storytelling. I'll tell you right now, Mitch Seaborn, has astounding storytelling chops, okay? It, you'll, you'll get really wrapped up into this. From the beginning, you get this sense, just a, a sense of eeriness overall as the as the story is told, as, as the story unfolds. We have a, a young writer named Harper Monday. And that's an awesome name, by the way. Uh, she's trying to make it big. You know, she's she's she writes poetry, uh, She's trying to become a, a published author. She's got to jump through all of these obstacles that are set up by her father. I guess she's, you could say by her malignant father. A little side note. Her father's dead. Dun, dun, dun. Starting to get a few twists in there, aren't we? So while the story is unfolding, we, we get a sense this is more than your typical, straightforward, supernatural story. Instead, we get somewhat of a, uh, somewhat of a sinister entity with one goal in mind. It, it, the one goal is to destroy Harper Monday. Not directly, but more taking everything that she loves, taking everyone that she loves, just ridden her of, of all pleasures of, of life, basically. And for the most part, Harper is guided by her mother. Her mother, unfortunately, has also passed long, uh, but she comes to her in dreams and, and times of trouble, and she's somewhat of a, a, a guiding light, a, a guiding angel for Harper. And uh, there's a, eventually a part where Harper gets out of the bad situation. She flees town. She gets away from it. And, and then she finds out her father has died. And she thinks everything's behind her. You know, she thinks the the bad stuff is over with. No, we wouldn't have a book if that's the way it went, right? <laughs> she finds out the evil is just beginning. And her father will do everything he can to make her pay for leaving him behind. The story is loaded with a, a gambit of emotions ranging from love to hate, happiness, sadness, grief, agony, back to love and hate. And attachments created to each of the characters. You're rooting for the good ones. You want them to succeed. Uh, and you just want the, the, the father the spirit, the entity to go away, to get, just leave. And you'll see what I mean when you get into it because you really do get wrapped up into it. You get invested in all of the characters' lives. And Seaborn does a great job using an inner dialogue throughout the book that really creates extra emphasis on a lot of the events. A lot of the thoughts that uh, Harper is thinking come to life in the words that Seaborn uses with this inner dialogue. It's pretty easy 
to see Mitch Seaborn has done his homework with this story because uh, the things we cannot say, a bit reminiscent of a handful of Stephen King stories mixed with Blatty's The Exorcist, but all done with his own spin, his own twist. Uh, you know, you can tell he's tipping his hat to the legends. I will say, however, there's one little drawback, one, just me being picky, this is just me. The story seemed a tad long for what it is, for the story that's being told. I just thought it was a little bit long, not necessarily like overkill, like scenes were extended too much just for the pleasure of, of more words, more so, um, once the protagonist figured out what was happening, it seemed like it took her a, a pretty long time to decide to do something about it. Uh, and, and that part may have been stretched too long. Nothing to take away from the, the whole story, nothing to take away from the, the, the meaning and the feel of the story overall. Still a great story. Uh, it's a very fine piece of dark literature from uh, Mitch Seaborn. He, he brings the right amount of creepiness and what I mean by that is the right amount that makes parts of the story very unsettling. Uh, he's able to bring a, a toxic family relationship to the forefront to a, a situation that can be dealt with. Uh, and because of this, I, I want to read more of Mitch Seaborn. I, I have four other books on my handy dandy Kindle. So I will be checking those out as soon as I get a chance to get to those. But yeah, this is this is like my gateway to the world of Mitch Seaborn. Good stuff. It, it, I really enjoyed this. Overall, I settled on a four and a half out of five. So if you haven't picked up any uh, Mitch Seaborn uh, uh, stories yet, what are you waiting for? I know you're gonna say, well, Jay, why did it take you so long? It, I'm a busy guy. Okay, what's your excuse? <laughs> yeah, so I'll put the link up there for the um, the show, the Paper Cuts episode. Uh, you can find it on my channel. You can find it on Brad Proctor's channel. Uh, if you prefer the podcast format, it's on all kinds of, uh, of podcasting formats, Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher, uh, long list of them. So, so definitely check it out. Good stuff. This is the things we cannot say from Mitch Seaborn. That's going to do it for me, guys. I'm glad you stopped by. I'm glad you enjoyed me as usual. Until we meet again, stay safe. Bye-bye.